We are just five months into the war, or just over, rather, five months into the war in Ukraine. President Zelensky says he wants the war to be over by winter, which is almost exactly five months away from today, the start of winter. For more, let's welcome in retired Air Force Brigadier General and Newsmax contributor General Blaine Holt. Uh, General, good to have you back on. Good morning. Good morning. Good to be back. Um, so we have talked about this really for the last five plus months here. So what does the West, and when I say the West, I basically mean America and the other NATO countries, need to do to make sure this war is over by the start of winter five months from now? Right. Well, it's not going to happen with projecting weakness, Rob. What we what we have to do now is assess the situation for, for what it is. You have Russia that is actively engaged in a genocidal push across the country trying to erase it. You've got the West that's not supplying on time proper things necessary to expel the enemy. Um, and the diplomacy is all aimed at Zelensky. It's not aimed at Putin or Moscow. Uh, them thinking that, oh, well, we did some sanctions. Uh, that must have done the trick. It right. obviously not done the trick. No, the sanctions the haven't worked. Number one. And I don't mean to cut you off, General, but I think no. you could make the argument, and it's a good argument, the sanctions have not worked. Uh, you right. look at the value of the ruble in Russia, it's, it's through the roof, uh, and they are making money hand over fist because they know, Vladimir Putin knows, that the world, the EU, and winter is coming, okay, that they, we need their oil, we need their natural gas. Um, and right. unless something changes, uh, we're just going to continue with this stalemate. Um, there was some good news, and I'm trying to read between the lines here, but grain shipments out of uh, Ukraine and Russia through the Black Sea are going to start this week. Uh, that's a really good sign that these two sides were able to get together and work out some sort of deal. What do you read into that, if anything? Good news is like uh, being an entrepreneur. The uh, investment dollars are only real when they're in your bank account. So I want to see 5 million tons go uh, to where it needs to get to. Uh, but what I'm very worried about is this is more part of a political or a public relations effort that Lavrov's making down. It doesn't mean we won't get some grain out. We need to. But the West has got to pick it up and get it out over land as well. Um, uh, when you throw missiles at grain silos the day after you ink a deal, let me tell you, it's probably not a real deal. Interesting. Um, do you want to go into more detail about that? Well, we've got this famine that is absolutely now not reversible. We are going to see people die of starvation uh, all the way down through the Middle East and into Africa. Lavrov understands very well that if they don't show some sort of progress in that world, they're going to start losing any kind of uh, relationships they have down through a very critical area for them as well. What we can do at this point is help accelerate the evacuation of that food. Moreover, we need to aim our diplomacy at protecting the fields that are already sown with wheat coming up uh, that needs to be harvested uh, in the fall. Yeah, and, and General, you know, look, I, I get it, and I'm right there with you. I get that maybe the focus of a lot of people in America has shifted from the war in Ukraine to the problems we've got going here in our own country. 9.1 percent inflation, gas uh, still over $4.30 a gallon. That's the national average. We've got an administration that doesn't want to use the word recession. They want to use the word transition. Instead, so I get that we've got our own problems and we've got midterm elections 100 days away. But why don't why aren't we hearing more about the mass migration out of Eastern Europe, out of Ukraine? 10 million Ukrainians have left Ukraine since February the 24th. Six million are in Poland alone. That can't go on forever. No, and you've got two separate mass migrations that are going to come in the opposite direction with the food security issues. In Africa and the Middle East, you're going to see uh, out of starvation and collapsed governments, migrations coming up into Europe. And then we're already seeing it at our southern border, but if you, nobody's even reporting on what's going on in Panama, it's imploding. And the food security issues in Latin America are very real. We see food problems here with ill thought out policies on fertilizer. And, and, and it's going to happen on both sides. This isn't good for anybody. And, and we need some strategy now to get at this. All right. House Speaker Nancy Pelosi still seems dead set on visiting Taiwan at some point in August. The White House, according to The Wall Street Journal over the weekend, does not want her to go, but they will not formally ask her not to go out of respect for our three branches of government, which is funny if you think about it, because the White House has spent the last month criticizing the Supreme Court and telling the Supreme Court what to do. Um, so what do you make of this? Does Nancy Pelosi go to Taiwan? Yeah, this is their own party, by the way. So uh, you've got one telling the other, the other who happens to be the chief diplomat of the United States of America, I'm going anyway. The military has advised that's not a good idea, but we don't get any granularity on why. She interprets that, that, oh, the Chinese are not going to shoot down my airplane. 
That's not why nobody wants her to go. It's that she's going in advance of the most important political event in, in mainland China, which is the 20th Congress, where she is going to crown himself or attempt to. Again, this is destabilizing for them. It's a very bad time for this. And you know what? Even though the Taiwans won't say so, they don't like the timing of this trip. I don't know why this is important or in our best interest. Such a good point about these are politicians, okay? There's no chain of command. Um, so they're politicians from the same party. I, you think Donald Trump wouldn't call his House Speaker and just be like, yeah, listen, pump the brake on the trip for a couple of months. Um, that right. makes no sense. And it's just not true, um, given That's what true. they've said about the Supreme Court over the last month. General Holt, always enjoy it. Good to see you. Thank you. Good to see you. All right. Hey guys, it's Rob Carson. I want to tell you about the Patriot Gold Group. But first, let me tell you that the S&P has already lost $8.2 trillion in 2022. Did you know that? Peak inflation is not even hit despite the Fed rate hikes on groceries, on gas. You know it as well as I do. Morgan Stanley and Goldman Sachs are warning of another 20% drop. Inflation is winning in a knockout right now. The Fed is going to raise rates again at the end of July. Meanwhile, Goldman, Wells Fargo, and Bloomberg are all forecasting gold to surpass all-time highs highs. If you want to invest in gold, call 888-936-2373 now. Call the Patriot Gold Group today and ask about their no fee for life IRA. Sounds like a good deal, don't it? Here's the number, 888-936-2373, 888-936-2373 for the Patriot Gold Group.